So what we're going to be doing in this podcast is using our principles of stratigraphy to actually put layers of an outcrop, which are these little blocks right here, in order of uh, what, how they occur, you know, first to last. Relative dating does not give us an actual date. Um, for example, I have an older brother and I've got a younger brother. Uh, my older brother is Frank and my younger brother is Danny. It, notice how I didn't give you their actual ages. You don't know if my older brother is uh, a year older than I am or 10 years older than I am. Uh, same with my brother, younger brother, Danny. You don't know if he's 10 years younger or if he's just 10 years old. All you know is the order in which we were born. Relative dating is the exact same thing. We don't actually put them um, or give them an age, uh, how many millions or billions of years they formed. All we know is in what order they formed in. That's all relative dating can tell us. So using those principles of stratigraphy that we came up with in the last podcast, we can actually go through these uh, diagrams here and put them in order of relative age. With that being said, um, there are, I believe, six examples. And what I want you to do, we're going to do each one of them on this podcast. But as uh, or before I actually show the answers, I want you to pause this podcast, write down the orders of what you think they are, identify any unconformities that you see on, and then play the answers. That way, by the end of it, hopefully you're getting the idea of how to identify these unconformities and how to put these in order of first, second, third, and so on. All right, so before I start this one, uh, I want you to pause the podcast. I want you to write on the diagram the relative order of these, one being the first thing that happened and whatever is the last. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> so hopefully you guys picked out that the very first thing that happened is this bottom layer. The law of superposition states that uh, the older rock layers are found on the bottom if it's an undisturbed sedimentary sequence. That just means someone uh, something hasn't come along and jumbled up the layers. And we're pretty sure that this is undisturbed because they're nice and flat. Law of original horizontality. Okay, so this would be the first. And uh, off to the side you do see that there's a key. Uh, we do know that there's a shale and that will become important later on. From the last, you, you should kind of remember that we can look at a rock layer or kind of rock and know the environment that which it formed. We're going to tie that in with this later. Uh, then, if this is the oldest, this would be the second oldest layer because it's right above it. You can't have this layer put down before you have this layer. And then you have this third of gravel or sand and the fourth layer up here. This is the youngest because it's on the top. These fossils. Uh, we're going to come back to these figures later on and actually try to give a relative age um, or time period in which they could have formed. Okay, so this uh, diagram is a good one that represents the law of superposition. Next, again, I want you to pause. I want you to put these in order of relative age. All right, so law of superposition states we uh, always start on the bottom for the most part. And this layer of conglomerate is definitely the first thing that happened. Uh, and then you kind of work your way through the other layers. But you should notice something about these first four layers. They're not flat. Law of original horizontality states that all they should be nice and flat. They're not really flat compared to the above. They're actually at a, an angle. That, so these are an angle relative to the layer above them. We do know then that this is an angular unconformity, right? And it's uh, identified that it's unconformity by this erosional feature, which means something's missing. All right, so not only should you have then identified that and put it in this order, but we also need to know what causes these, right? Why is there this angular unconformity? What does that tell us uh, that was happening while this uh, uh, layer or this event was going on? And Angular unconformities are caused uh, by uplift and erosion. All right, so this normally means that, say, two continents are coming together. The land that's in between gets squished and pushed up. All right, that's how mountains get formed in mountain building process. All right, the land that's in between the continents is uh, raised above the ground. This this is the uplift <clears throat> as being lifted above. Uh, there's more wind and water and glaciers that are going to erode it and cause 
those rock layers to be worn away. Hence, these inclusions and the erosional feature. Then finally, the last thing that should have been put down is this top layer. Notice how it's, again, relatively flat. Okay, so this one is uh, kind of similar to the last one, but there is one new feature on it. Pause, identify all the different uh, events on here and put them in order. Okay, so um, definitely first one is just sandstone on the bottom, and then you've got the silt and the uh, shale and this conglomerate. Again, notice how these layers are all deformed, but they're all deformed equally. Right? That means whatever deformed them, deformed them all at the same time. So we know they were put down relatively flat at one time, they're not flat anymore, so something had to deform them all at the same time. Then the next question is, is this uh, basalt, this igneous intrusion next, or is it this unconformity? All right. The way that you can tell is right here. All right. Notice that it's the igneous intrusion cutting across this unconformity. All right. And this is an angular unconformity because it, these layers are at an angle. In fact, this, uh, the fact that the basalt is cutting across it means it's younger than this unconformity. So the unconformity happened. And you can see it's also cutting into these layers above it which means this basalt is the youngest feature on here. Another thing that I'll draw your attention to are the little spikes off to the side. When that um, magma rises up through cracks, probably caused by uh, the mountain building process that formed this angular unconformity, this hot magma rose up and uh, as it cooled, it was in contact with this parent rock, this field rock, and actually caused the rock to, to change, to undergo metamorphism. Okay, this one's tricky. There's only three things on here. Uh, again, pause and try to put them in their relative order. So, <clears throat> we've got this uh, metamorphic schist. We've got this granite, uh, uh, yeah, this granitic uh, igneous rock here, and we've got this basalt. Uh, most people can see that this is cutting across both layers, so it's got to be the youngest. But what most people don't see is that this igneous rock is actually causing some metamorphism. There's a zone of metamorphism all around it, which means this had to be there first. All right, this just had to be there first, then the granite, then the basalt, because again, this is uh, causing metamorphism in the schist. And then you can see that this is cutting across and doing a little bit of metamorphism also on the granite. Go ahead and pause. Put this in order, please. All right, so um, what we should see here is again, we always want to start on the bottom, uh, but we're not sure which one came first. That's where this intrusion, or this, excuse me, zone of metamorphism comes into play. We know this uh, nice had to be there first, then the granite. Um, since this igneous intrusion here, which is known as a sill, because it kind of looks like a window sill, it's level with the layers. Uh, since this cuts into this layer, we know it's younger than that layer, and we know it's also younger than the uh, erosional feature here, because it's cutting into that. And since this is non-sedimentary rock, below and in contact with sedimentary rock, we know that this is a non-conformity, which is the third event. Um, <clears throat> this fourth layer, again, we know this is younger than number four here, this uh, gravel, or excuse me, sandstone. But the question is, which one of these last two, the sill or this conglomerate, would be the youngest layer? They don't really come in contact with another, they don't interact, so it's very hard to tell. And in fact, you can't tell. Not on this diagram, at least. Not with the, the principles that we have. Last one. Pause, identify the order, and then uh, we'll see how it goes.
All right, so um, we've got all sedimentary rocks, so there's no real tricky things in here. We just need to identify the different things uh, that we see. Uh, so we have this limestone is first, we have the clay is uh, second, and then we have this uh, gravel as third. The question though is what is this? All right, this is a uh, fault. Uh, in fact, it's a normal fault. When we study earthquakes, uh, we'll see why it's known as a normal fault. <clears throat> The question though is, is this younger or is this erosional feature up here, this unconformity, younger? And again, we want to rely on cross-cutting relationships. Whatever cuts across the other is the youngest. We know that this erosional feature, this unconformity, is cutting across the fault, which means this should be younger than this. So the older of the two is this fault. Then you've got this disconformity because it's just a... Uh, Erosional feature in between two sedimentary rocks. And finally, number six. All right, so you should have six good examples. You have this podcast to rely on to try to put things in order. You want to use this information and now you're use this information to work on the assignment that comes after this.